Hi, I'm Spencer Christian. On this episode of Tracks Ahead, we'll look at New York's impressive Hellgate Bridge, visit a father and son whose passion is collecting vintage Lionel trains, and we'll explore the fabulous Terry Gorge in southern New Zealand. But first, most of us at some point in our lives wanted to run away and join the circus. Well, the circus travels by train, so what better way to explore the big top than by rail? It is called the greatest show on earth. When you say circus, this is what most folks picture. The Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey Circus delights fans who are young at heart and just plain young. We are currently performing in our third century in the United States. We started in the 1800s, performed through all the 1900s, and now it's the year 2000s. And that's quite remarkable in itself. There's a lot of businesses that wish that they had the kind of success where they could be in business for 130 years. In an age where kids turn to the TV or computer for fun, this kind of classic entertainment still packs them in. And this, all of this, still gets from place to place in classic fashion. Well, it's more economical to move it by rail. Um, you know, the, <clears throat> the fleet of trucks that we would need to move this show would be astronomical. We, we have uh, 42 wagons on each unit right now, as well as our animals, as well as our performers. And um, it's just not even close economically um, to transport this by truck. The train makes getting into and out of cities and towns a swift operation. We can unload the train in uh, two to three hours and have everything transported from the rail yard to the arena that we'll be performing in. When the greatest show on earth is over in one town, a teardown begins with almost military precision. When the show is over, even during the last, during the last show, we begin the loading operation. We begin loading the wagons. <clears throat> Everything with the show goes into an individual wagon. The wagons are numbered, and it's, it would be specifically for rubber or for electrical. Um, it could be for props, it could be for wardrobe. Every wagon has a specific item that gets loaded into it. Those wagons are then transported to the train where we have uh, 16 flat cars and one bi-level car that, um, that we load and we uh, takes us approximately four to five hours to load the train. Once everything is loaded and properly secured and the ramps are put away, then we're ready to depart to the next city. Yeah, you can go ahead and turn that. I'm going to have them dump them on the other end. If you look at the whole evolution of uh, the uh, piggyback loading on, uh, on, in the railroad yards, that whole, that whole industry grew out of circus loadings, and we're, we're still doing it the old-fashioned way. These aren't just ordinary trains painted up in circus colors. Ringling Brothers crafts them for the specific needs of the operation. We're in Palmetto, Florida right now at our uh, rail car recycling operations. And we opened in September of 1992. And what we do basically is um, we take older rail cars, whether they're purchased from Amtrak or other railroad companies or whether they come out of our own fleet, and we strip them down to the bare raw metal and rebuild them totally uh, from top to bottom, from the trucks to the car bodies to the interiors. There are eight different kinds of accommodations different versions for different members of the team. They're more or less assigned uh, by the position uh, that someone has on the show. Uh, a dancer will have a different size room than the performance director, and the performance director will have a different size room than the general manager, and so on. This is one of our larger type rooms here. This has a full-size bed with a twin bed up top, and uh, the dinette area also converts into a sleeping area if needed as well. Uh, this room has a <clears throat> four burner range and an oven, uh, comes with microwave, full size refrigerator, and um, <clears throat> all of our cabinets have special knobs on them to prevent vibration while the train's moving. You have to pull the knob out and then it opens easily. When it's closed, it's secured. These coaches here um, will become homes for uh, people on the show. They'll be homes to performers and or staff members. 
and um, they'll be their homes for two to four years for, for performers or for staff members. It could be for the length of their career. Well, I lived on the I lived on the Blue Unit Circus Train for ten years, and uh, it's very nice. I mean, even though your accommodations may seem uh, small, uh, in relation to the train, they're actually very big because a lot of people don't realize that. Living on the circus train is a lot like living on a ship. You only have so much space to deal with, so we try to think it out and plan and make the accommodations, whether it's for someone who's just hiring off the street or whether it's for the greatest performer on earth, we try to think out the room layout and make it as comfortable as we can for the people that will be living in that room. When I first came here, I lived in a very small room, but I also lived on a car with about I guess 12 other girls. We shared a kitchen, we shared a bathroom. It was like dormitory life, you know? But I really enjoyed it. I mean, they were all my friends. We would have so much fun on the trips. It was, you know, it was a, a lot of fun. It was like being in college when you're living with a bunch of girls. So it was fun. But then, of course, when you get older and you start doing other things, and my husband and I got married, so we got our own room. And, you know, it's, it was comfortable. It's, you grow with your space. <laughs> Mark Gable grew up in the circus. His father was the famed Gunther Gable Williams. Home for Mark has been the circus and the train nearly all his life. Well, I was born and raised here in the Red Unit of Bringing Brothers. I was, ever since I was uh, knee high, I was on the train and I've been on it 30 years now. It's, it's a great, it's a great place to live. You get a different view every week, open your window, look out the window and uh, you get to see a different view, a different city, different people. It's fantastic. It's the American dream on rails. If you spend any time at all around the performers, you'll hear a wide range of accents and languages. Many countries are represented in The Greatest Show on Earth. Life on the train is like a mini United Nations. We've got people from Czechoslovakia and Russia and China and all of the European countries, as well as America and all the different states in America. And uh, everyone gets along. Just, just fine together. I wish that the world governments would look to Ringling for some of their political problems. <laughs> this is not just a temporary place to store your clown shoes. This is a rolling community, and it doesn't have the fly-by-night feel of some kind of motel on wheels. It's home. Many people have families uh, that tour with The Greatest Show on Earth. We have our own school teacher uh, that tours with Ringling Brothers, and. Um, in a room like this, if this was uh, <clears throat> going to a family, you could conceivably have husband and wife sleeping down in the full-size bed and one child in the upper bunk and one child in the lower bunk. So this, uh, this room could conceivably uh, accommodate a family of four. The train is home to myself, my wife, all the inhabitants of the train. You forego some of the luxuries of full-size bathtubs, but you have a place that is home where you have a place to put all your clothing, you're not packing up every two days, and at the end of a hard day, you go into bed and, and you're just home. One luxury you don't do without is good food, right here in the pie car aboard the train. I bring them in items that I get out of magazines and say, can you make this some night? I made them, we made, uh, what'd you make? What'd you uh, make for the last barbecue? It was excellent. Oh, crab bisque. Crab bisque. Big, big old pot, because I'm from New England, I'm a New England boy, and he made a big old pot of crab bisque and nobody thought it would go, it was the first thing going. It's a magic, and it has to be in your heart. And he works, and he does his best, and he, he makes some of the best shepherd's pie omelets. I can personally attest, the man is personally accountable for at least 15 of my 70 pounds I've put on. If you've ever dreamed of running away to join the circus, make sure life on the rails is part of that dream. And if your dream comes true, you'll be a member of the family that puts on The Greatest Show on Earth.